first uh, press freedom um, day yesterday, international observed, and uh, in the Ethiopian capital, I believe, uh, journalists uh, numbering a thousand plus or so have gathered there for the purpose. But here in Ghana, there was some observation of sort even the day before discussing matters of the safety of journalists. Let's hear uh, at least uh, Professor uh, Kwame Karkari, Professor Karkari, uh, who spoke a bit about that um, at an event. The most frightening and dangerous acts against journalists' freedom, particularly in this year 2019, are the murders and direct threats to the lives of some journalists. We are all familiar with the as yet unsolved cold-blooded murder of Anas's companion, Ahmed Swale, in January this year. In most of March and April this year, the very well-known and respected investigative journalist of multimedia fame, Manasse Azuri, spent virtually all of March and April this year running and hiding from rogue elements of unknown identity who were bent on a campaign to murder him. At first, Manasse's employers kept moving him from hiding place to hiding place. The police came in to provide him bodyguards for protection during the day. Even this was not enough. The threats got so unbearable, the Media Foundation for West Africa had to step in to find refuge or safe haven for him in a foreign country. Once again, it is important to emphasize that the problem we are discussing becomes even more complex and dangerous to address because they are being perpetrated mostly by non-state actors or their agents. Are there flag jackets that have press written on in any newsroom here so that when you go into a conflict zone or on a demonstration, they can identify you as such? We see it on TV all the time with the international journalists. Do our, do our newsrooms have those? Do we say in our newsrooms that as a journalist, any time you're going to an assignment, wear a name tag with our thing on? So what are the, what are the uh, newsroom um, protocols and, and, and policies that relate to safety of journalists? Are there any helmets? Are there any bulletproof vests? I mean, how are our newsrooms protecting journalists? And we need to do that. All right, so you had Professor uh, Karkari there and also Professor Gadjepo, Audrey Gadjepo, uh, speaking at the Media Foundation for West Africa and the Ghana Journalists Association event about the safety of journalists. And the report is that between February 2018 and March 2019, there have been as many as 22 separate attacks on journalists in this country, S about seven of them perpetrated by police officials. Um, Kweku, how, how do we ensure that journalists get sufficient protection? And that should be the theme in this country. I suppose that's what the GGA and MFA wants us to pay attention to. See, over the years, we've, we've, we've done very, very well as a nation and in also in terms of the media. There's no doubt about it. We are long past the era of a culture of silence or a culture of fear. We should be proud of what we've done. But to be very honest, the assassination, the callous assassination of Ahmed, turned almost everything upside down. Mm. And I'm not surprised that it has informed the decline, perhaps not the only one, but it's key. And you listen to international communications, there's always a reference to that incident. Mm. And it's not good for Ghana. We've had journalists beating left, right, center. Our offices shit bombed left, right, center. Indeed, there was a GJ uh, uh, Asante regional ch uh, chairman or president. Samuel Lenin. Yes, who got murdered. You know, sometime it was it 2007 or so. I've forgotten there. Exactly. About 2005, 2006. There yes, about, yeah, yeah about. Mm. So we've had such things, but we we did so well. You know, we repealed the criminal and seditious libel in 2001, created the atmosphere for us to be more vigorous. I think we should be disappointed mm -hmm. that we have declined and declined because of 
such incidents. Mm. Okay? We should, we, should, we should not be happy with ourselves. Mm. And that, that should serve as an impetus for us to make sure we can improve on our ranking again. Okay. We are still in good position. There's mm. no doubt about that. Mm. But some of these things can easily throw everything out of jail. Right. And I, I appeal to the police, the state authorities, including government, you know, uh, to wake up. When you have people who belong to the legislature or the executive of the number of political I gave, parties. Uh, political party persons are responsible for eight of those can attacks. Can you believe that? Yes. So, so Police then, is responsible yes. for seven of them. Yes. <laughs> okay. So they should wake up. But to be honest, it's a mission impossible to think you can actually <laughs> get the media silent. Mm. Especially the kind of multiple mm. plural media we have today. It's a mission impossible. Right. Mm. But mm. the police should wake up. The authorities should wake up. When people sit on radio and TV and threaten, mm. issue threats, we should kill that mischief. And there should be no selectivity, no discrimination in that respect. It's so disappointing that we have mm. fallen down a bit. But I hope we'll come back next time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On top. Did, did you know about yeah. the revealing information that Prof. Kakari put out about Manasseh Azura? No. Eh? No, I heard that it because yesterday. Because of the malicious story uh, about the DI group, which government disagrees on, perhaps it looks like an, it's an interpretation disagreement, on the basis of that there were people who were after his life. Yes, I didn't know till yesterday. When I heard Prof. talking about it, I was surprised. Mm. Uh, Manasseh is a good friend. He's one of the, my favorites in terms of journalism, it's contemporary nice. journalism. Mm. We should make no mistake about that. Not that he's perfect, mm. but I think he's a fantastic professional. Right. And we should protect him. I didn't know till yesterday, mm. you know, and that is important. Perhaps we too, the institutions, the media houses, right. also must begin some in-house mm. security, you know, uh, capability right. building. But the last about week, that. Yeah. I, mm. I, I, I guess last week I wanted to speak on this. Is there an official government boycott of news file or of the multimedia? Is there? There seems to be something like that, even though they don't seem to be properly coordinated. But um, you, they try, producers tell you, we contact this person and they tell you that we are told not to speak until maybe we get an apology, as if it's I, I, I pray it's not official, because mm. otherwise it's cowardly and unstrategic. And I didn't expect that to come from the MPP. It won't be the first time a government is boycotting the but multimedia group. Exactly. You read my mind. I said I didn't expect that from them. Mm. We've had a situation where governments and parties have boycotted this station before, including <coughs> the. Well, I remember the Amina story. Yes, also. yes. Amina Bass. Uh, Amina <laughs> Bass. Story. But I didn't expect it to come from the MPP. Well, for the NDC, they were bold enough to announce it publicly. The MPP doesn't seem that, to be bold enough to say one. so. That's a courageous one. But that's mm. why I said this is cowardly and unstrategic. And if there's any such policy, I'm appealing to government and the party to review it as soon as possible. And it is not in the known character exactly, of this government. Exactly, ma'am. So for me, so, sorry, but you know how Ghana has now fallen because of some of the things that have happened? Mm. The point that has to be made is that these are not necessarily government sanctioned. All right? Yeah. So I met Swali's problem and some of the things that we are seeing. They're not necessarily government sanctioned. Yeah. My pain, however, is that this government had, or you know, this uh, administration has a certain um, perception or heart, okay, to be more media friendly, to be more this and that. But it's in their fact. time, this if you do a comparison, to be it's happening, a fact. and it is a shame. Look, when we travel and people start making these comments, we have to correct them and say, hey, it's not like our government is, <laughs> you know, fighting journalists. But the truth is that this is what is happening now. Mm. Okay, let's not reduce it to government. Uh, yes, so that's where I want to go. Decision at whatever quarters to boycott programs of multimedia because of the militia. But the point is, it's we should cowardly. also pay attention. Let's see it. It's cowardly. Okay. <laughs> it is also important to point out the DJ president was saying, for example, that there are journalists who are doing the wrong things. They are unethical. Mm. Yeah. They are taking yeah. bribes and mm. doing all sorts of things. Mm. You don't expect that they should get any support. Simply because they are media people. Absolutely. But the point is, beatings, fish them out, deal with them. It's not a kill. Yeah. So, no, <laughs> let, let's talk about the people who are doing these wrong things. Fish them out, deal with them. But then the next thing is Kweku's point. There is a way to deal with them. And usually they'll be in the minority. So, that system must be self-cleansing. Substantively, what I want to say, 
there is a major shift in what is called media. Yeah. And I think, just for listeners' sake, everybody look for David Cameron's TED Talk. The topic is the next age in government. Please look for it and listen. It's very interesting. Yeah. David Cameron, the former prime minister, says that government has changed because of the massive shift in information. And you have a situation now, you have people like me even develop you know, information, you make news here and there, civil society, citizens, social media, including fake news. Mm. Now, all of that comes into play. So it's not just what government is doing. It used to be so in the past. Mm. Now you have a situation where somebody, let's say Manasseh does his job, somebody who says he belongs to or supports a certain government takes it upon themselves to go right. and act in a certain way. Right. So it becomes a more complex mm. situation. However, we must appreciate that we can never go back on this information a thing. It's better for us as a human race, as a country, as a people. What we need to do is figure out new ways of managing this new paradigm. Okay. Now, That's doc, thank doc, you. I, it's, it's this president, like Kuku mentioned, you can't take it away from him, for leading at least the repeal of criminal libel. No. And, and that's not a mean thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, as we speak, there are countries where they are jailing people we will be gone. for seditious and mm -hmm. criminal libel. And all the litigations mm -hmm. many of us went through. Yeah. Yeah. It was the president mm -hmm. and Akutuampa and the rest yes. who defended Free. us. the defense for Free. you. Free. Right. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so what did I do? I just <laughs> lost the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Forgive me. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. But... Government issues a statement on the back of uh, International Press Freedom Day, and it says that even government itself is in the process of implementing a media capacity enhancement program to boost the capacity of media practitioners in the delivery of their mandate. They say also that the protection of media practitioners is also to witness a boost with the introduction of a coordinating mechanism on the safety of journalists before July. This is good, and government must be applauded for pursuing such goals. This is the president who has said that he prefers, is it the ugly whatever media to yeah. whatever it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it is, and I think we should applaud government for that. In fact, when you look at Article 162, Clause 5, mm -hmm. it requires that all agencies of the mass media shall at all times be free to uphold the principles, provisions, and objectives of this constitution and shall uphold the responsibility and accountability of the government to, for the the, to the people of Ghana. This tells me that the media is part of government. Yep. And governance is incomplete and meaningless without the media. So this statement is important. But what we need to see is we want to see action. It's good to protect the media, but the media must also be responsible. Right. It's very important. We're talking about media being protected. But the media must also be responsible. They should know that they have a stake in the governance of this country. And if we are able to agree in that partnership, I'm sure we'll be able to make a headway. A lot may have passed under the bridge, but going forward, how do we forge a very good partnership? It's good government has put the statement out. Mm. Let us all hold government to it. Let us make sure that the state is prepared to partner with the media. Right. The media cannot mm. be continue. We cannot continue push the media to the war okay. because they are part of government. Right. And, and, and President Muhammad issued a statement, among others, asking the media to also assert themselves and to do things that, you know, will, will keep them in the place that they belong. But he's also in, interested in ensuring that in, in a process that ensures that media receives the needed protection. Uh, the CPP has issued a statement. They, even them are calling for uh, turning the media commission mm -hmm. into an authority of sorts mm -hmm. so that a lot more can be done. Something, let me commend two of your colleagues uh, from multimedia, uh, Joseph and Manasseh, mm -hmm. for winning the international awards. Uh, that tells you that media has evolved. Uh, it's not, especially journalism, we all know journalism started with pen and paper. Those is when we were in school, Kweku, we prefer Kweku and uh, uh, Kwesi Pratt, when they are talking, say, these are the men. Yeah. It has evolved. You can have people at home who use social media to yeah. send news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's no longer mm -hmm. pen and paper. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. now moved on. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do as a country? That is why we have the whole chapter, chapter 12 of the Constitution, dedicated to the media. And doctor has rightly said that. You see, the media also belongs or is part of government. But we have the three arms of government. Mm. And the fourth state of the realm is the media. So hey, media how do you say media is part of government, and yet 
the constitution itself mm -hmm. has set up an NMC which is supposed to insulate so, insulate the state media so we, from that mess. So we are fourth estate. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we are saying that. In fact, mm -hmm. I agree with whoever says mm -hmm. that we should now convert this, the uh, media commission mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. media authority. Okay. Why so? Because look, if we have slid or we have moved or dropped from twenties. 23 to 27, mm -hmm. it shows clearly that there's something... What could that authority do that the commission can do? Mm. What sanctioning powers? Sanctioning powers. It, now, uh, they are the laws now. Who, 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 can, who can sanction a, a, you know, a the journalist? The person who has mm. been injured by the journalist. Good. So we are saying that, look, for let's take uh, the, the gentleman who... Ahmed Swali. Ahmed mm -hmm. Swali is, mm -hmm. for instance. Can the media commission go and arrest the, the, the perpetrators of Of India? course, that's, that's murder, that's police. If you find them, so there's the, And the police hurt the okay. state right. government. Mm. So President Mahama is saying that, look, this every government, including mm. our previous government, right. should take every step to make sure... Right. I'm sorry, but we've run out of time. Happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gadgets of journalists. Thank you very much. My guests have been Abdul Malik Kekubaku, editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Emmanuel Kwesi... Bejra is MP who works and ranking member, works and housing committee. Dr. Eric Odrosai is governance expert. He's a lawyer. His constitution looks different. He's, <laughs> he's done different things about it. He's also a chartered accountant. He's rewritten right. it. Kofi Bento, <laughs> yeah, he's rewritten the constitution. You should get his copy. <laughs> Kofi Bento is senior vice president of Imani uh, Africa, and he's a lawyer. Earlier, we also had... Adam Mutawakilu, MP Damongo, and Ranking Member, Mines and Energy Committee. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini. My outreach, as always, is by Latida. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>